Okay, so more Chroma. Now, so far I've done videos on both my ice build and my electric build for my Chroma, which I think is one of the best frames in the game. He has quickly became my go-to frame. I absolutely love him. And because you can build him so many different ways, it means that you're not tied down to having any one specific build or element to make him effective. Try enough combinations of builds and elements and eventually you will find the perfect fit for your playstyle. So whereas I love running my Chroma as an ice tank, soaking up damage so I can deal more damage in return and basically tanking and spanking very large groups of enemies, Ice is kind of favoured by a lot of Chroma users, but I know some of you guys love to run him with the fire or the elemental build. Now I'm not really sure about Toxic, I really haven't seen too many of those guys running around and stamina is about to get removed soon so modding for Toxic kind of seems a bit pointless as of right now. So as requested this is how I run my fire chroma when I fancy having a bit of a break from running as an ice tank. Right now I have two specific builds from one build centers around his effigy and using it as a kind of defensive turret with a really low energy pool on infested missions and the other build is a vexing ward build for a high health damage dealing tank. Now the vexing ward fire tank I've been using very similar to how I would run my ice tank. It has a great amount of survivability especially since it doesn't just increase your health but it also heals you if you're in need of some health. Activating elemental ward will increase both your maximum health and your current health by a fixed amount but when your elemental ward wears off your health cap will return to normal but the health you've gained if you were actually missing health at the time will remain. So if you're low on health and you pop elemental ward then your health will increase and when the ward timer runs out then the health that you have now gained will of course remain. Power strength of course will increase both your health boost and your damage output from the elemental wards auras but the aura itself doesn't exactly deal a lot of damage so forget about range mods because the damage just isn't worth it. Now I think teammates can still jump in and out of that aura to kind of top the health off as well if they are low on it. I'm not sure whether that's been removed or not because I, I kind of tested it solo. Also if you're running with any of the weapon specific mods from Steel Meridian or even the Vehicle Merlock which gives you that Steel Meridian proc which also tops off your health by 25% it basically means that you can stay alive for a very very long time and considering that the Vehicle Merlock is ridiculously powerful as well then basically your Chroma will become a bit of a beast. The other thing I really like about this build is the Fury buff from Vex Armor increases your damage output by a pretty substantial amount as well. Once your Chroma loses 100 health, your Fury will be at maximum damage for your build, so expect to drop enemies super fast. And I think in my footage, my Fury is hitting about 630% at maximum level for my build, of course. Now, I believe you can get it much higher with more power strength equipped, but I didn't have a Blind Rage on, so that's what I'm getting. Now, the damage output can pretty much allow you to clean a room fast and easy and it is a lot of fun as well. So the Vexing Ward build consists of three former, it's modded for Intensify and Transient Fortitude for Power Strength, Prime Continuity and Narrow Minded for Duration, Prime Flow for Energy and Rage to Regen your Energy and of course Steel Fiber and Vitality for Survival. It's a pretty simple build and I run my Chroma as a Frost Tank 90% of the time so I only use this for fun and Rage is a personal preference mod so you could switch it out for a Blind Rage mod if you stick another Farmer on your Chroma. Now the second build that I've been running with on my Chroma is my Effigy build and I've been having a lot more fun with it and it's bloody powerful as hell. I've been using it on higher wave defense missions in combination with weapons like the Tonkor and the Torrid and you can run solo pretty easily with it if that's the way you prefer to run. Now the combination of the stun and the knockback and the damage from the effigy is so bloody effective. Throw in the clouds from a Torrid or the explosive power of a Tonkor or even a Penta I guess and it's easy mode activated. Now once your Chroma is modded for efficiency and power then you're pretty much good to go with your effigy build. My effigy build is very similar to my Vexing Ward one, except I've dropped out Prime Flow for Streamline and I've changed Narrow Minded out for Fleeting Expertise. Now I'm thinking of sticking four former onto my Chroma now because I have three at the minute, but a fourth would allow me to get Blind Rage into some of my builds, but I'm not sure if it's going to be worth increasing my energy efficiency for abilities. I enjoy having to spend less energy and being able to use my abilities more often than having slightly more powerful, costly abilities. Now the reason mods like my Transient Fortitude, my Prime Flow and my Prime Continuity are two from the top are pretty simple. It's because of fusion cores and I need a lot more to max them out. Now although I'm using Effigy here with my fire setup, I feel it's a lot more effective 
a frost element due to the fact that it slows enemies down with the frost which in turn gives you more breathing space and allows you a lot more time to clear a room so those are my two fire builds at the minute i will update these builds once i stick another form on them because i think i am definitely going to do that but let me know in the comment section what is your favorite element of choice with chroma hit that like button and subscribe for more warframe have a great feckin day and as always thanks very much for watching